Ladies and gentlemen, for all of us performing artists on the stage tonight, it's, it is indeed a great privilege and an honour to be here in celebration of an extraordinary bunch of workers who, 40 years ago, um, did an act of such courage and vision uh, that we still feel inspired by it today, which is why we're all here. Um, so, thank you. Um, I've got an old pal, and he's very, very old. Um, he used to work in the shipyards then in those days um, as a painter. He then left the shipyards and went on to become a, a scenic artist in theatre and TV and movies, and that's where I met him, and his name is Bobby Starrett. <laughs> Bobby, some of your pals are still alive, son. You're all right. Um, he sort of gave up the ghost, you know, and now he's a kept man, you know, he's his woman that keeps him, but um, he occasionally kind of scribbles wee things and draws things and writes wee short stories. Uh, this is one called The Electric Blanket. I hope I do it justice, Bobby. The pipe insulator removed his mask and lit up a cigarette, coughing violently as he did so. The painter stood in front of him holding out two 20 pound notes in his outstretched hand. The insulator waved him away with a gesture indicating he was aware of the painter and the proffered money, but there was a more important task on hand, namely to get an intake of breath. When the spasm of coughing finally ended, the insulator wiped the sweat from his face, shook his face resignedly and looked to the painter who was already speaking. You should pack in the fags, he says. I know, I know, mumbled the insulator as he sat down on a drum of toxic material he was using to lag the pipes of the ship. The meeting was taking place aboard a ship being built in one of Glasgow's legendary shipyards. Fiberglass dust was everywhere and could have been seen dancing in a shaft of sunlight. If ever sunlight could have penetrated into the hell of metal and pipes, there is the centre of a modern vessel. Sunlight, aye in your dreams. The aforementioned pipes are the reason that the insulator has been employed. His function was to cover them all mile upon mile with asbestos tape and cement from his drum. This gun she calls monkey dung. A light-hearted term for what is causing his ferocious coughing and is killing him. Hey, young man, what can I do for you? Single or double? Blue or floral? <laughs> Wheezed the insulator. As he did so, he extinguished his cigarette. Oh, give me a double, please. Uh, floral, replied the painter. The insulator stood up and produced a dog-eared notebook from the top pocket of his overalls, causing a small dust storm around him as he did so. Absent-mindedly, he brushed this from the notebook, took a pencil from where it was stuck between his head and his helmet, and wrote down the painter's particulars. Oh, I'll see, see you on the deck above three o'clock. Okay. The insulator concluded. The painter nodded in agreement. The insulator took the notes, stuffed them into the notebook, replaced the pencil, pulled on his face mask, pulled from the side of his belt the incredibly sharp knife that is the insulator's preferred tool, and commenced working. Single or double whip? inquired an electrician nearby, tying thousands of electrical cables into groups and inserting them in, into metal trunking. He wah, wah, mumbled the insulator through his mask, noticing the electrician in the gloom and dust for the first time. It's, it's electric blanket, son. Ni, ni rubbish, ni neither. It's now we seem. Are you interested? If so, give your name in cash and you're declared in. The electrician approached the insulator, inquiring if the products were a good deal. Oh, half price seconds. Nay, substandard crap, replied the insulator. All right, I'll have a single, declared the spark. Could, could you know have asked me when the painter was getting fixed up? Said the irritated insulator, stopping work, replacing the knife, and restarting the trading procedure. Oh, aye. And make it floral, exclaimed the spark. As the transaction was nearing completion, they were joined by a young foreman. What's this? Uh, Ikea for fuck's sake! 
A nation of shopkeepers, right enough. The electrician had returned in haste to the cable tie. The young foreman, noticing the alacrity with which the spark had resumed work, could scarcely, scarcely contain his anger. If you're no happy working in this industry, pal, then we'd rather be blethering on the outside. That can be arranged. Just you get cracking with your cables, or you and I will be taking a walk upstairs. The electrician was by now working at such a speed he'd already cut his hand on the metal trunking, but who cares? He wasn't have been taken to the manager's office, and in any case, he'd just negotiated a good deal into the bargain. The foreman, seeing the effect he had just had in the electrician, experienced a surge of power, and in a flush of excitement, turned to the insulator. He addressed him in sarcastic tones. I think you're in a wee bit of trouble, squire. Almost before the sentence was complete, the insulator had pulled out the blade and held a point uppermost under the foreman's throat. This type of knife is almost entirely comprised of blade. The handle is merely a piece of tape wound round the end. The business part is razor sharp. Being kept in that condition by being sharpened every 30 minutes or thereabouts. Now it's under the young man's throat with an angry insulator in the end. The foreman is now silent. Beads of sweat are on his forehead and upper lip. He's on tiptoe, stretching with every sinew to rise even higher. His arms are outstretched for balance. Comically, as he stretches further, his white helmet, the symbol of his authority, falls from his head and rolls under some machinery. He's terrified. Building ships is a dangerous occupation, but the dangers are known and understood and accepted with a kind of fatalistic logic that lessens the fear. This knife business is something else. The foreman's muscles ache, but he didn't weaken. That knife is sharp. The insulator speaks in a rage, teeth fastened with spit. He mockingly repeats the foreman's threat. <laughs> Think! I'm in a wee bit of trouble, squire! But you're fucking deed right on that score. And I mean deed. I've got about a year to live with this daft asbestosis. And you say you think I'm in a wee bit of trouble. Fuck off! Who am I sight or a blade you right now? The knife removed, the young man makes a rush for safety. The insulator's coughing again as he composes himself. The insulator, the electrician, has been working conscientiously. All drew during the dramatic encounter, jobs are scarce. So why draw attention to yourself by even being involved in the incident as a witness? You'd been lucky already with a warning, don't push it. But having heard the performance, he's intrigued. He's human. He speaks up. Uh, is that true what you said about only... Uh, half a year. He couldn't bring himself to finish the sentence. It seemed so final, but he ploughed on. Uh, I mean, the, the doctors, they, they, they could be mistaken. The wrong diagnosis. He trailed that. After a period of silence, he resumed. There's something I have to ask you. Can the insulator butts in to save, save the spark further embarrassment and confusion? Aye! I know. It's time I spot on, son. Half of every test there is, it's hopeless. Seen all the specialists. I've been in and out of that hospital like the lobby light. See, when they first tell you the news, you don't take it in. I sure you know what it means, but you don't want to. Believe it. You just shut, shut down your thinking, Pat. And then you think, why me? And then you think, well, why know me? And then you plan that trip down the world, you know the score spark. Everyone's the same. Crap. If it was me, I'd rob a bank and leave the money to my family. It's not that simple. How would you go about ro robbing a bank? I wouldn't know how to begin. So robbing a bank's a non-starter. I thought a dying scares the shit out of me. 
हमारे यहाँ एक नहीं फेरा भाई हमने ऐसा सुर अस वहीं रह गया सेव जा लेक्चर ब्लैंक से सब गया तो इन सब कैश है सेट फॉर द वाइफ ऐसा स्कैम बन जाएंगे क्या साल हमारे हम गांव चल रहे हैं ना फर्मेंट बिबाने दे क्लूजी सिनो हम रोने राफ फिर दम इस अगेन सर I'm sorry, but that's why I come here. What? I keep my mind off the future, you know. Lying in bed with a big tuft, oxygen bottle beside you. I'm fucked, and I'm worried. Oh, but here, Reba, want to ask me something? What was it? The electrician says. Can I change it for the blue?